woodcraft, helping you make wood work. I'm good to go? Okay. Um, anyway, we're going to cover the fundamentals of Northwest Coast style native carving as opposed to East Coast or some other place. Um, I have spent a lot of years studying carving. I have a degree in fine art. I studied native carving in Washington and in Canada. I went to the Fleming School of Fine Arts in Ontario where I studied, specifically studied like totem pole carving and, and that kind of carving. So in Native American culture, the carving style is a way of expressing specific things within their culture. Everything is representative. They don't carve just for the sake of carving. All the animals, all of the images they carve have a specific purpose and a story that goes with them. Um, for example, a totem pole is not a religious object. It's a historical record of a family. Or it's a historical record of an event within the family. But it's all related to the lineage and the people that are represented by that family. There are very specific elements that go into all native art. And that's what this handout is kind of directed towards. The primary element of any native design is called the ovid, which is the second shape down. Now the ovid comes from the study of a salmon egg. A salmon egg is translucent. And if you hold it up to the light, you can see the embryo inside. And the salmon egg looks kind of like this. Now when that salmon egg is resting on a flat surface, it compresses and you get the ovid. The ovid is the primary design element for all North Coast style native art. Off of that, if you cut the ovid in half, you have the U shape. The U shape is kind of like this. Now, it's very rarely rounded like this unless it's depicting wings or some other structure. But if you look at the U shape, it's like this. Reason being is that they look at things, and measure things like this, and they notice, oh. If you look at the beak on a bird, it's like, well, there's some similarity there. And when they tie that into the Ovid, you have the two fundamental building components for native art. So this, the piece that we're carving, that I'm working on today, and that is going to be used in the carving class, is the head of an eagle. If you look, you see the ovid. You also see the U shape. And this is also a U shape, the wing shape here. This is also a U shape. This is the salmon egg shape. Using those primary elements, you can draw just about anything that has to do with imaging used in the Northwest. Animals, birds, fish, all of that. They're all based on that. If you look at this, this is a killer whale. This killer whale, as you can see, if you look, you can see all of those design elements that are built into that. It's just a matter of repeating and where you place them. I don't know if everybody else can see it, but I can't see a whale on that. Pardon me? I said I don't know what everybody else sees, but I cannot see a whale there. You can't see a whale? Here's the head. Here's the dorsal fin. Here's the tail. Hmm. I thought that tail was a car. 
Was a car? That's what it looked like for me. Well, native art is, is a little abstract in appearance unless you know what to look for. Yeah. But you have the head, you have the pectoral fin, you have the dorsal fin, you have the body, well, you have the tail structure. The you see it now? Yeah. But if you notice, those shapes are all repeated in various different ways throughout the, the structure. And that the reason for that is that native people believe everything is interrelated. <coughs> Their culture is actually very practical and simple in a lot of ways in the fact that everything is related to every other thing. And it goes all the way through from their social beliefs to their art forms. Let me give you a handout, ma'am. Could you pass that back? No, pass that back to her, please. So, let's just go through this a little bit. North American culture is based upon practicality and keen observations in their environment. By observing nature and learning from it, they have gained a unique and practical means to live in harmony with it. This practicality permeates every aspect of Native culture, including their art and creative experiences. The paintings and carvings designs of the First Nation Northwest Coast Natives is no exception. In fact, it is probably the greatest example of it. The design principles are taken from nature and expanded on by nature. On the northwest coast, from Alaska all the way down probably to Oregon area, that is considered the Pacific Northwest region. That style of art that permeates that region is broken up into four main divisions. The first division being Alaska, which is the Haida, the Tlingit, and Simshian, works down towards the Queen Charlotte Islands, is called the Northern style or North Coast style. The Mid-Coast style, which is the Kwanawaka and Kwakutl and Bella Coola, is similar to the Northern style in that it's very strong graphically. If you notice, there's these sharp edges on the on prominent features like on the fins here, on here, on the tail. That is exemplary of the North and Mid-Coast styles. The further south you get down into Lower Canada, Seattle area, and down towards Oregon, the designs become softer and more rounded. Some people think more realistic looking. Um, but the primary reason for that is that those areas were initially impacted greatly by the European movement that came over. The northern styles and the mid-coast styles were less impacted by those people because they were more warlike and they tended not to associate with the non-native cultures that came into the area very much. And then as time has progressed, then those influences move, moved up the coast into Alaska and then further down south. But initially, Seattle and Vancouver area and, and that was the strongest connection to the European cultures. And so they tended to create art that was more for export, if you will, to them. And so they became more stylized, they became softer because the European culture did not understand the spirituality that was going along with the designs. And um, they tended to create more decorative kind of art. And the southern styles, because they were less warlike, had less of an aggressive lifestyle. Like the Tlingit, for example, were extremely warlike and very aggressive, kind of like the Blackfoot in Montana. And they tended to be a very dominant culture and their art form is a very strong, dynamic, masculine culture. Whereas the further south you go, the culture becomes more, less masculine. Probably more feminine influence and a softer culture because they were more fishermen. They were more into sedentary type living, fishing and, and uh, harvesting 
things that they grew in the area and that kind of thing. Agrarian type life. And you can strongly see that as you move south. I personally like the northern and the mid-coast styles because they're much more graphically dynamic, I think. They're, uh, you can distinguish them very easily and they become, they're actually really powerful in their presentations, which I personally like. And that's the style that I do, mostly. Any questions so far? Okay, this is for you guys to take home because it tells, it tells about all these shapes here. The, o, the salmon egg, the ovid, the U-shape, and then the variations on the U-shape. If you look at a raven's tail feathers, they are a little bit more square, but they tend to be this kind of shape. In the northern culture, in order to give them a wing-like appearance and still stay within their graphic boundaries. They started adding the points to the image or the tips of them like this so that you got the feeling that there was a feather design. And there are certain feathers like, um, like hummingbird feathers and uh, um, flicker feathers that actually come to that, that point. And if you notice on a tail feather, the point is central. The more you move off to one side or another, that point tends to move out. So at the very end, you have this pointed edge on the tail feathers. And that's what they're trying to depict in that. And the bottom two, th two things are what they call connecting shapes. You have the S shape, which is based on what they saw, like for example, a fish swimming that had that kind of curve to the body, a snake or some kind of like worms or something like that that had that moved in that direction. And then these little pointy elements like are here are what they call connecting shapes. They had to have a way to connect images, you know, shapes together. In the class, you'll see more of, of, of we'll go much more into detail in the class, but For example, in this eagle, you can see where the connecting shapes are, are used to bring the elements and components together. This is the S shape here that's modified, it's connected. This is a strong connecting shape here with the neck to the body. These little points are the connecting shapes for the top feathers on the head. And this eye style is pretty typical of the northern and mid-coast styles, whereas the circular style is pretty typical of the southern style.